If you're watching this video, this interview for Geeking Out About was recorded on July 25th, 2018. Enjoy! This is Trisha Lynn, uh, and it is time for Geeking Out About reviews and also interview and playthrough. And basically, it's a playthrough review interview all in one. Um, I'm here, I'm playing Avowed, and Avowed, as you can see on my screen, and on my right, you can see uh, Dave Gilbert, who is, uh, well, t tell us about yourself, Dave. <laughs> Hi, I am Dave Gilbert, as Trisha said. I run Why Should I Games, and I am the designer writer of Unavowed. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, this is actually not the first game that I have uh, reviewed for uh, Geeking Out About from Why Should I, I think. I want to say a couple years ago, we had done a review of Resonance. Oh. Um, so tell me more about how your studio has changed from then and then until now. Like what, like what themes from that game may have come through to this game or what, what the difference is or. Well, um, Resonance was not written by me. That right, was, it was uh, produced by your studio. It was produced by us, yeah. Uh, my wife did most of the programming. And honestly, I was not involved with Resonance as much. My wife handled most of the programming on that, and Vince, of course, did all the design and writing. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of the, the QA and voice recording and just sort of sanity checking on getting the project done. Um, in terms of just the studio, what's changed since then, that was like six years ago. I mean, we... <laughs> We had a kid. <laughs> that does change things. That changes things just, just slightly. Uh, we moved to Brooklyn, so we're in a whole new place. Um, I've, I guess, like my um, my philosophy towards design has kind of changed a lot. I like to keep things a lot uh, tighter than I used to, uh, just in terms of writing and designing and efficiency and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty much doing the same thing as I always have. Um, our resolution is doubled in terms of uh, number of pixels per screen. Um, so yeah, not, not, not much has really changed. I'm still doing kind of the same thing. Although Unavowed is a, as a game, it's a big departure in many ways. How would you say it's de a departure from the other games that you've produced or created before? Um, well, uh, there's just the structure of it. It's more RPG-ish than the other games with uh, most of our, with actually pretty much all of our other games. There's one path through it. And once you, I mean, there's some small deviations, some small choices, but for the most part, it is the same game each time. Mm -hmm. um, with Unavowed, I really wanted to uh, take that to a different level. I wanted to have a lot more branching, a lot more party stuff. I kind of was very inspired by uh, mid-era Bioware games like mm -hmm. Knights of the Old Republic and Dragon Age and Mass Effect and Jade Empire and, and those games. Uh, and I was very inspired by a statement by a former Bioware writer named Jennifer Hepler who wanted to be able to skip all the combat in <laughs> the Bioware games in order to get to all the narrative stuff. Yeah. I, and I I know what you mean. Like one of the mm -hmm. things that did strike me as I was going through the first couple scenes, uh, first couple missions of Unavowed is that there's a lot of ways to tell the same story, but the way you get to and through those conversations does have an effect on on what how you perceive the story. Like yes. for example, I'm I'm doing two playthroughs right now. One of them with the bartender background and one of them with the actor background. And you can tell that there's a different sense of how your player character interacts with the NPCs as a result of that background. Mm -hmm. and, it changes how you interact with Logan. Yeah. By almost com almost oh, completely. Oh, totally. Because, yeah. you know, one character knows him and the other character doesn't. And I think that mm -hmm. it has a really large effect on how you feel about what party members you bring with you, too. I mean, there's also, yes. there's obviously the, the ubiquity of you know, if you think you're going to be seeing a ghost, well, you should bring the character that could see a ghost and mm -hmm. other things like that. But tell me more about how you chose the different um, player the non-player characters to be part of the party. Uh, I don't know. I guess they just kind of came to me. I, I kind of, when I first started spitballing ideas, I just sort of sat down and 
just kind of let it come. I just wrote a scene, this stream of consciousness, and I just had um, just kind of from the universe or wherever ideas come from, it was player character being uh, confronted by a, um, a like a warrior woman type and a um, kind of nebishy priest. <laughs> and uh, they kind of were waking you up saying, you've been possessed for a year and you know now we gotta get out of here because these monsters are coming in. It was just very, just off the cuff, quick, you know, so I, that's how I came up with Eli and Mandana. I sort of fleshed them out, changed the priests into a mage because priests mm -hmm. are kind of overdone in terms of exorcisms. Sure. Um, and I fleshed out Mandana, made her made her half gin and that kind of stuff. And um, I, I guess for the other two characters, um, Vicky and Logan, um, I'm a big fan of Dresden Files. Mm -hmm. And I guess mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Dresden Files, but I, I haven't read. Uh, too much of it, but I am familiar with the story and the concept. Basically, like, I always love the character of Karen Murphy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vicky is my version of Karen Murphy. I like the idea of a pretty much mundane character who had connections to the police mm -hmm. who could help you out in that mm -hmm. respect. Um, Vicky's, if Vicky has a power in the game, is that she knows every police officer in the city. Mm -hmm. So when you encounter any police officer or anyone in law enforcement, she knows them and can <laughs> talk to them, and they're more willing to give you information that they wouldn't have given you otherwise. But and really, I mean, how realistic is that, though? I actually used to live in New York City, too. Not very. <laughs> <laughs> I also used to live in New York City, and again, I don't think it's awfully realistic. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> my, my my world my rules um uh, it's just she just she's very familiar but also she comes from a cop family so there's yeah. more of a chance that she would know more police yeah. officers than not and, and again, she's also got that investigative background which again mm -hmm. is helpful when you're trying to solve this mystery of why are these why is this demon activity increasing and yeah. what happened to me from last year? But that's also, um, with both of those two missions that you played, um, the Bronx and Staten Island, they had to do um, a, a few things. Mainly is that each of them, the goal of each of those missions was to introduce these two characters. Mm -hmm. Staten Island, um, my focus was always on Vicky. How could everything kind of was there to support this character and introduce you to this character. Um, like every everything you even before you meet her for the first time, everything is there to tell you like who Vicky is, who her family is, where she's coming from, what everyone thinks about her. And then you meet her, you kind of already have a, a vague understanding of who she is. Um, and with Logan, my goal was to show you like what he could do and what his powers were and um, kind of how basically show how these two characters could help you if you brought them along. By the time you finished their missions, I wanted you to like them and want to take them along with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, more than just their this person can do this sort of thing, therefore, I probably need to have them in my party, sort of that yes. mentality, right? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer in terms of who you can bring with you, there's always a path through. Which uh, I agree, again, yeah. having done the two playthroughs. Um, two different ways. I do appreciate that you do make that mechanically easy easier for someone to do, especially mm -hmm. when they're going to do their second go around. Like, for example, in 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 one of the early missions, it's really useful to have someone who can speak to ghosts around. Whereas, mm -hmm. in that, if you didn't have that person in your party the other the other time, you had to find another way to get the information. Yep, exactly. So, so now we're actually at the point where both Ricky and Logan have joined the party. And mm -hmm. I'm going to load my game. And <laughs> so now we've met everyone. This is Vicky. This is Logan. We already had, like, in my backstory, I already understood who this is and why they're important. Mm -hmm. And we have yet to speak to Kalash. So tell me about Kalash as we go through his uh, voice. Uh, oh, sure. Kalash is a seal. Uh, so, oh, so you just you did um, Staten Island last. Yep, just, um, yeah. Yeah, um, Clash is the leader of the Unavowed. He's kind of a, I like to call him an old toothless lion. He's just been, he's uh, at least a thousand years old. He is uh, tired. He's seen it all. He got very complacent because for the long, for a long time, the, no one really needed the Unavowed. Um, and so he's kind of content to stare into the fire and, you know, think about past glories and rest on his laurels. And, and, and suddenly now that the supernatural threats have risen, He's suddenly finding himself having to rise to the occasion and having trouble. So um, he's he's the leader, but he's kind of 
out of practice, but still trying to maintain that dignity and control over over the group. And he's also Mandana's father, uh, so there's that dynamic. Very stodgy, but not a sort of like not a grandfatherly stodgy, but very stuck in his ways. Oh, well, he's also incredibly old, <laughs> so <laughs> there's there's that. Um, and he's voiced by uh, a guy named Sang Won Cho, who uh, goes by the name of, I think, ProZD on internet, on Twitter and stuff. And he's uh, just kind of, he's a phenomenal voice actor. He does a lot of voice actor related things on his YouTube channel. And I was very, uh, uh, I was very happy to get him for this role because he did a, a really nice, really, really good I mean, job. I do want to speak about this voice. Set. Like, okay, so I'm listening. So Vicky's really dialogue is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that is Ariel Siegel, and I know her. Uh, she auditioned for Techno Babylon uh, back in 2014, and I liked her um, for a character named Max Lau, who is also a police officer, but in the future. Um, and she was kind of like the uh, like kind of a more sassy, actiony kind of police officer, and. She well, that was Max Lau in Techno Babylon, uh, and then she played um, uh, Kathy Rain in Kathy Rain. So she always kind of is my go-to badass girl. <laughs> and, um, one day I, I asked her um, when I came up with the idea for Vicky. I'm like oh, Ariel. I wonder if she can do a Staten Island accent. And I said, Hey, can you do a Staten Island accent? She's like, Yeah, I can do a Staten Island accent. This is before I even wrote a word of dialogue for Vicky. Right, right. I I just knew I wanted Ariel to voice Vicky. Because I it's good to know job. what you have in your in your back pocket whenever you need it, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And tell Logan, me more, hmm? tell me more about like who Logan is, because like the, it's, was jealous. it's interesting. Kid like, didn't have quite the so this body. is my actor character who mm -hmm. has never met Logan before. How would you describe Logan who didn't know his his backstory to somebody who's meeting him for the first time? Well, he is, um, if you've played Blackwell, uh, he is a bestower, um, and a bestower is someone who can see and talk to ghosts, and their thing is that they help ghosts move on. And so, so he's actually a character from uh, one of the other uh, Wadjet Eyes games. He's not a character from Blackwell, but he is like the same, uh, he's the same type of thing. Like he's a medium like Rosa Blackwell and Lauren Blackwell were in Blackwell. He's just, he is like them. And like them, they have a, a spirit guide. They had a spirit guide named Joey. Logan has a spirit guide named KK, who is the ghost of a 10-year-old uh, girl. Who And they, she kind of follows him around and you know helps him talk to the ghosts. And together what they do is they find lost spirits in the city and help them move on. So over the course of the game, uh, if you encounter a ghost, he can talk to the ghost and you can get more information about the neighborhood and about things that have been going on uh, through Logan. I have a picture on my phone of what she was. Oh, wait. This is new. When she was alive. Oh, you know, oh, yeah. KK's picture. I'd love to see the picture. Go, go ahead. Oh, she's adorable. <laughs> she's not based on your own child, is she? No, my, child, <laughs> my 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 kid is too young for this. And actually, K, uh, the character of KK is from is is from a pr a previous game. She okay. is from this game, so she's a, she's a spirit oh, guy. I don't know if I want to know about That's, that. Uh, um, I, should I click this? Should I find out how she died? Uh, go. It's not going to spoil anything if that's okay. what you're worried about. <laughs> you never spoke to a ghost before, so okay. You yeah. You don't ask a ghost how they oh, died. Hmm. You just don't. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So, let's not do that, okay? Okay, so so, so here's a question then. In the previous sure. mission where we picked up Logan, mm -hmm. the three spirits he was talking to, they were very upset. Yeah. And we need to know more about them and who they were, but we couldn't ask them how they died, and we couldn't know about how they died? I'm. Well, it's more that they, um, in order to help them move on, you have they have to be confronted with their death because so but since kk can't move on she just she just basically chooses not to talk about it that's and that's sort of a thing from blackwell as well uh right. if you ask joey how he died he just refuses to tell you so that that carries over here 
So in other words, so this takes place in the same universe as the Black World games? Or? Yep, and the Shiva. There are a lot of uh, crossovers. That, well, not a lot. There's a lot of subtle connections between the two. Um, earlier, actually, if you go back to the East Village, um, that police officer in front of the burning building mm -hmm. was from one of the Blackwell games. Uh, oh. You'll see just, just small little small cameos and references. So it's not a sequel, but there are references to the Blackwell games. Uh, but but you don't you, have to have played them to understand this I've game. been looking up all the little... Uh, all the little uh, Easter eggs you're putting in the skating, you know, the oh, yeah? wake poster on in uh, the Bronx and yeah. um, the tr like Logan's playing the troll gate. It's again. Well, it's that's really a Blackwell cool. thing too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and call this meeting. All right. What is it? Yay. So what's our next meeting? mission? Let's find out. Let's call the meeting. So now, of course, Eli and Madonna come in. By the I'm way, Madonna's awesome. Oh, She's I'm glad you like really her. Awesome character. Tell me more about her. Okay. Well, she is half gin, half human. She is. Uh, sh her. Uh, she was born around the time New York was founded, so she has a very strong connection to the city. And her, uh, her she is. Um, uh, she is very good with her with her sword. That is kind of her thing. Uh, she also is uh, unable to lie. She cannot lie, and she can tell when someone else is lying. So that is useful when you're when you're talking to people out in the field. Uh, she is also like full of trivia about New York history. Um, so if you go into any neighborhood of the city and ask her about the area, she'll like tell you what tree was there 300 years ago, or like what farmer used what used to grow what crop like a block away and and that kind of stuff or what cow she was friends with you know in the field or what used to be a field 200 years ago um so like she, she she's like a source of knowledge about the city um and she's also like she, I, I was really happy with how um her speech patterns turned out because she has a very interesting way of speaking and i sort of take that as like she is since she always has to tell the truth she has to choose her words incredibly carefully. So she is always constantly thinking about what she's saying before she says it, which leaves these like wonderful little awkward pauses and things when she talks. So that was something me and the voice actor worked out uh, a lot. And um, that was a lot of fun to do. She was a lot of fun to write for. For real? Did you do any forensics? On the ghost? On the body. She's right can you really do forensics? That's I might a good not have to all the tools, but I still have my connections on the force. Okay. Uh, and that's good all to the know. shit they put me oh. Fun <laughs> You all know your duty. This is the first of one of my games where there's like swearing. 90% of the swears come from her. How did you like how did you feel about like Language. writing the dialogue for these different kinds of like for, Okay, so we haven't spoken about Eli yet. Mm -hmm. Eli is our, our fire mage. Yes. And tell me more about his backstory. Okay, well, he is, um, Eli is a fire mage. He was a, uh, kind of came into his power later in his life. Um, he was a, he was an accountant, a family man. He was raising uh, his two daughters on his own. His mother died uh, soon after they were born. So uh, he kind of was, you know, God. He was just a he was a, he was a dad first and foremost. He really enjoyed was loved his life, but he was also like very youthful looking. He didn't really age. He just thought like, oh, I'm just, I, I'm I'm just lucky. And then one day he just accidentally set his office on fire. And, uh, Wait, the mayor would grow new arms. The mayor would grow new arms. It's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> Are we gonna find out in this game? Um. Uh, no, not in this. Game. <laughs> sort of a, um, a game? I've I've referenced in black in other games that something is really weird with the mayor, so I'm just sort of hinting at that here as well. Um, See here, okay, so this is something that doesn't make sense to me. There was a ghost in the basement, right? Mm -hmm. So Logan can talk to ghosts. Yes. If he knows forensics. Why can't I take both of them with me? Okay, well here here was my um uh here here's why I did that okay. mostly because. Um, there are, I wanted to limit the number of, um, at first there was a fifth companion character. You chose the actor origin. So you remember there was a muse character. She was going to be a companion as well. And it didn't seem like she was very friendly. No, well, <laughs> something happens. Like, I, I, since, well, I, well, since I ended up not using her, I could do whatever I wanted with her. But, um, well, what I did, what I realized was that 
if you could choose any combination of characters, that was like, I think about 10 different paths that you could take through every mission, which was just way too much. And so I limited it. I decided, okay, well, if you're out in the field and encounter something weird, Vicky and Logan aren't going to know what it is, but Eli and Mandana do. So I wanted to make sure that one of them was with you at all times so they could explain what the thing is. Uh, and in the end, so that, that limited the number of paths to like, I think seven. And then I thought that was still too much. So I cut out Muse, her name is Calliope. I cut her. And so that limited the number of paths to five and that was a lot more manageable. So I, I that's what's in the game now. So that's why I, I adjusted that. So you have to have Vicky or, I mean, you have to have Eli or Madonna with you on any mission. So yeah. it's still five different paths through every mission. Right. So it, and so it's basically a party of up to three characters, including your character. Including you, yes. Uh, okay, so if I'm going to... Can see you staring at oh, I, I love these little chat. dialogues on the subway. I know, I love these too. I think this is a great way of maintaining a sense of character and place. Thank you. But without... Um, well, it's also having my cake and eating it too. In, in, most, <laughs> in most other games, like having the characters talk to each other means that you can't do anything. You have to, gameplay is taken away from you while the characters are talking to each other. But in situations like and this... I can't tell you how many times I've actually just sat here and wanted to see... Uh, it becomes it becomes a choice that you make versus <laughs> something that you have to do. And I noticed this with Oxenfree. Like I yeah. played Oxenfree, and like the characters never shut up, and it never. But it never stops being engaging because I'm walking around and looking at things and doing things while the characters are talking. And if I'm leaving an area, I know that means the characters will stop talking, and often I will stop and wait for them to finish because I like hearing them talk. But that became a choice that I made versus the choice that the game made for me. Yeah. So that that is something that I, I was very conscious of. So the other detail that I'm really loving is again this whole detail of the subway map. It's been so like Thank you. I moved out of New York City in 2012, and this map is just so very iconic to anybody who uh, has left or lived in New York City. Okay, so I'm going to see a ghost. Of course, I'm taking Logan. Move Vicky, add Logan. This is another thing too I love. Every time you chick you click on them, they stand up. Like, Originally my my idea was that they would each have some kind of like iconic pose. Like they'd be I know like I always keep going back to Bioware because that was kind of my template for how I designed the game. Um, you know, they have like their character, all the characters, like one whips out his sword or they flex or they, you know, whoosh, they do their magic thing. Um, but no, I decided this is a game. This is New. This is a game about New Yorkers. They're on the subway, and I just kept it. I kept it very. I made it very, kind of iconically New York. Can I also give you a little bit of a nitpick? Sure. This cube is not it. A, it's not to scale. And B, <laughs> There's a lot of uh, liberties we had to take, take with real world geography. Because again, that's, that, the, the cube is way much larger than this, and it's a different part of Asker Square. Like, you, you I know. know this. <laughs> I know. Well, okay. the thing is, it's like there's no way you could walk to uh, from Astro Place to Tompkins yeah. Square Park in, in two minutes. Yeah. Um, so it's like I did have to compress a lot of things to get everything into the in, into frame, which I'm aware of. But uh, so, yeah, I, I'll own that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> have you gotten a lot of feedback on that? Um, you're the first. <laughs> <laughs> this, by the way, was so creepy coming into this scene mm -hmm. uh, with this okay so i'm assuming this is part of the lore who on your team helped you look into how to make these visuals come out the way well they basically aside from the character portraits every pixel in the game is drawn by ben chandler our in-house artist uh and he loves doing graffiti and when i told him the backstory of what happened here mm -hmm. um of what was going on with the cult and he, so he just designed the graffiti based on that. He's like, what would they conceivably draw on the wall uh, based on this knowledge, yeah. based on uh, based on this experience? So that's what yeah. he did. That's pretty amazing. Oh yeah, Ben, ben is, uh, uh, no one can wreck a building like Ben Chandler. <laughs> okay, so, and this 
so basically, so now we're going into the inventory management system. The fact that you can actually pick pick up a person and use them like you would a regular inventory hey, thing is pretty cool too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I um, I, I th that was kind of a placeholder at first. I thought I'd add something a little more clever, but then ended up just keeping that the way it was for the entire development because it works and it's fine. Come on, man. Tell us he your is name. not budging. Leave me alone. Do I need to come back with Ricky now? Do I need to come back with Vicky, or do I need to look around? Do you have... I don't know how to get through to this guy. I say we leave it for now. I'm not sure. Uh, here's a, do. here's here's something that I added because I was really sick of going back and forth to the subway. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love this. This is fantastic. <laughs> Thank sure. you. I'll You're welcome. My way out. That's great. Time passes, and here comes Vicky. Jesus. Love it. Did a crate of milk explode? <laughs> My one one thing in my design bible for this game was that I as a lot of Blackwell is full of uh, offices and apartment buildings and just little uh, and a lot of interiors and I kind of decided that if I ever needed to have uh, an interior like if something was taking place in an apartment or an office I would want to make it really special in some way so I'm like oh let's make the basement have forest and so that's <laughs> that's where this came from. It gives what? me, it also He's makes me think eaten? about the, the, Are we safe in here? the unseelie. Life energy does not. Yep. We, we and, would be wait, safe. Wait, I'm trying to remember. Fine. But if I turn into a plant woman, what? I'm coming after you. Anyway, the, good oh, news. Wait, His the, hands are still pretty human Eli's backstory. Yes, the, right, sorry. Not his hands. Oh, yeah, 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 that's tied in. <laughs> yeah. Fingerprints. Oh, yay. And got him. That's the easy part. Now I just got to call in a favor. Yay. Yeah, Donnie, it's me. Well, there we are. That makes sense. I know this is not how forensics works, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, again, it seems like efficiency <laughs> just to efficiency, get get it done. It making sense. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming he's the one. He's one of the people who were in the cult, radar about right? a year ago. I guess we know what happened to him. That makes sense. That's about all I can do for now. Is it cool if I take off? And I now you can do the opposite and bring Morgan back. No all right, cool. So now we know his name, and which means that now that we know his name, yep. we'll be able to talk to him more efficiently. Which kind of the idea here was that I wanted. So, well, this thank is you. Great. This is such a great mechanic. I, I wanted to show him. Um, is this the first time you've ever actually done something like that? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mentioned Bioware before, and um, like I, I hey. kind of wanted to take the um, my favorite part of Bioware games is to? just seeing how you're various companion characters that you, you choose a party and you go out and they react to things like you they might know the area they might know an npc they have opinions on everything you do and that is my favorite part of those games and my thought was well why not make that the focus of unavowed and so everything everything comes down to the characters like everything is about how these four characters will react to everything that they see and everything that you do and everything that's around them. And, um, I really think that it, it centers around them. Uh, and every, all the other games I've done, there's always something else that's the focus. In Blackwell, it was always the central mysteries um, with the characters being secondary. Uh, and this game is the characters that are the priority and the central mysteries be, uh, below that. So I always get the characters in mind for everything. There's so much story about these characters. I think it's great. I'm also curious as to why the spirits right. disappear into his He's head, gone. but I don't know. Anything. That's also a Blackwell <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's also a Blackwell. Okay. No. No, that's, that's just sort of canon. That's, that's the way so that's the way bestowers work. A sound suggestion. Um, okay, good. So one thing that I find myself, it, one thing that I find that I have to do when I'm playing this game is to mouse over everything, which is basically just a good... Okay, that's <laughs> my grove. I, I, I can't hear the sound, so I just assume the music right. is playing. Aggressive. Yeah, no, the you. music is great. I was thank you. You can thank Thomas Reagan back. for that. Have Gotta give him credit. At last. Um, hmm. That is you, is it not? I would recognize those pouty lips anywhere. Okay, my demon has a name was now. The, only I had left and the mouse over is, um, I, I stole that from a game called Stasis because I thought it was a great way to uh, show this character 
uh, descriptions of things without having the um, a text box appear on the screen and interrupt gameplay. Because usually what you do in, in previous games is you have the main character describe what they see. Um, but I couldn't do that in this game because the main character isn't voiced. So I did the... Um, oh yeah, it would have... I'd still be recording it. it they would be way too much. Especially since with the three different uh, professions, all the different paths through the game, and then the male and female gender, um, it would have just been impossible. There would have just been so much to do. And I just, um, and I found once I freed myself of that, I'm like, I just, the main character will not be voiced. That sort of freed me up to add even more stuff because <laughs> I can have these choices here and you can just, uh... so the character talks just isn't voiced. So I'm assuming the Northwards is part of Central Park, right? Or... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't look very banished to me. I know this. This world was created with magic. <laughs> uh, it's the woman voicing the dryad. Her name is uh, Tiana Camacho. Camacho? I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. Uh, she moved to Burbank and is doing real actressy things there. <laughs> It's nice, to know, it's nice to know that you have such a wide father, variety of Kalash, actors and Kalash choose from. How do you, lives, um, how do you, uh, how do you get them? Like, how, how, um, how do you choose from voice else. actors? I guess that's what is I'm uh, trying to ask. Well, at first, I, um, now, I was part of an improv group way back when, when I made the Shiva back in 2006. I was part of an improv group, and I just asked them to voice Jesus. characters so, in the game. Sorry, sorry. Right. Right. Garessa, you are free to go. Are you asking what to me or what what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> I want to renegotiate the terms of our agreement. Whoa. Um, I don't think Kalash is going to be very happy that we lost. <laughs> Girl in of the North Woods. It has been a while. Damn it! I should have been there. Why'd you enter the creepy magic forest without the guy that was fire? <laughs> He has a good point. Okay, that that makes sense She's too. She's wood. It burns. I could have done something. <sighs> you weren't there. It happened too quick. There's nothing you could have done. Maybe, I'm so maybe not. By the Guys, we need facts. Too. We need data. Like, Who is this tree lady anyway? You these, said you imprisoned her. This conversation is amazing. Ago. Thank you so much. It would obviously be a little bit different if you had brought Mandana to the uh, yeah. village I instead of, I mean, if you brought Eli instead of Mandana, oh, things yeah, change. Oh yeah, believe me, I'm going to do that in my other place. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool that you're doing uh, that. You're doing that. If you if you did the cop origin, you would have um, had like an, completely different. You would have yeah. You would have no, gone into it knowing Vicky instead of yeah. Logan. So yeah. That's. Yeah. Um, yeah. That sort of was my hope that it's like every with each origin story you would have known one of the companion characters but since i cut the calliope character from the game the actor the actor origin kind of gets yeah the actor origin kind of gets the short end of the stick but um the folks who play it they tell me that they're they're they still love it so they don't they don't notice that it's missing which is good because at one point i was gonna say between my bartender character and this character i'm not really noticing too much of a difference I, although i have to admit like I also love how when these these choices that you make in dialogue, mm -hmm. like as I'm reading them in my head, and also as I'm reading them out loud for my recorded playthrough, um, I find myself creating a character of my own as I'm reading these choices. How do you, yeah. when you do that kind of branch of dialogue, how do you how do you make the difference between these two? pieces of dialogue and what they go into in terms of the next set like how do that actually was challenging because in most other games with a predefined character you know if, uh, if let's say you know you want to talk to eli you just click on eli and you'd say hi eli and he'd say hi and that would be it you know you say like how are you i'm fine and that would be it but with this game i have to actually have every time the player character responds there needs to be like three options that the player can choose, which then need to, you know, then each of those needs a response from the other character, and that has to funnel back into the next set of options. So it was challenging. Um, it was not, it wasn't, it was actually harder to have an unvoiced 
player character than um, it, it was to have a voice one. I could see why Bioware gave that up. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's challenging. Very sad, though. It's yeah. very sad, though, because, like, well, I mean, what did your work process look like when you're drafting out these pieces, different pieces of dialogue? Like, this goes into this response. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming the second one would go into a different response. Um, some of them just go back I mean, to the same but, dialogue. Yeah. I think this one does. Yeah, this one goes goes back to the same dialogue tree. That means she has something to negotiate with. Well, she has her daughter. Words, good. Good, good, good. That's good to know. I'm coming with you. Do you think sir. he would have known? You know that, right? That whether or not, not she would, would be dead. Sure. Something I don't know. You don't invite the enemy to your door without a reason. You forget that I defeated her once. And her forest covered this entire island. Now she is only a tiny grove. Her okay, that's good to know. Fraction of what it was. Hey, okay, so have you how yes, familiar are you with the um or at least uh Discord series? Uh, I uh, I've read each one like five times in college. I love okay. it. And Would you say that maybe there's also an aspect of hey, KK and I were there when belief went systems down. We're going to. powering you ain't leaving me behind me either. This is a um, I didn't really get too into the lore so much because it can, it can get a little overwhelming. I I left things as kind of, because again my focus was more on the on the four characters rather than like where does Eli's magic come from? It he just it just he, it, he just has it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did you say that down here? Like as we finished, as he finished his last dialogue, dialogue, it said blank at the very bottom. Oh, did it? Where? Yeah. Uh. Oh, I'll have to show this to you. Like when we're done with this interview, I'll show this to you in the replay. But um, darn it! Uh, okay, that, that was. <laughs> I thought, thought I fixed tell all me, of those. Tell me more about QA again. Is this the? Is this the? Um, is this the uh, this review is the copy review or is this copy. the demo? This is the review copy. Ah, oh, darn it. Okay, well, that's something I need to fix before launch. Uh, it, it, whenever that happens, it's always in the um, in the early areas, like especially in. Uh, in the headquarters or in the East Village, because I coded the descriptions a different way. Oh, um, okay. So if you ever see the blank, it's always in one of these. But I thought I fixed them all. Darn it! Okay, <laughs> and it usually Does happens. It bother you when that happens? Oh, it it, it kills me. I want to. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, now it's good to know. I'll have to. <laughs> I'm gonna open up the code right now and take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I'll actually let you get back to that. And if I find any more instances of that, I'll let you know. Thank you so much for oh, thank you for having for, me for for doing this interview, mm -hmm. talking about your game. This game comes out on August seventh for Steam. Eighth. Um, and also, what are the other distributions? August eighth. Sorry, August eighth. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I thought mm, maybe that's Sorry. the embargo that ends on August seventh. Oh yeah, that's okay. probably it. So anyway, this comes out on August eighth on Steam. Um, what's the MSRP? An SRP. Sorry, manu uh, manufacturer suggested retail price. Oh, uh, $14.99. $14.99 on Steam. And are there any other distribution networks that you're using? Uh, Gog and Humble. Nice. Uh, that's uh, goodoldgames.com and Humble Bundle. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, if you could stick around, I kind of want to show you that screenshot again. Sure. All right. And uh, this, is, this has been Trisha Lynn and Dave Gilbert. Can you tell us where to find you on the internet? Um, on Twitter, I'm Wadget Eye Games. That's Wadget with a J. On Facebook, I'm Dave Gilbert. Um, I'm also on my forum, uh, WadgetEyeGames.com. I'm not hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> All those links will be down uh, here in the uh, description. And again, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on Geeking Out About Reviews, Plays, and Interviews. Bye. Bye. You've been watching a video episode of Geekly Speaking About, a project on the Geeking Out About Twitch channel at www.twitch.tv slash geekingoutabout. The game I was playing was Unavowed, which will be available for wide release for PC and Mac computers on August 8th for $14.99 US. The music I used in this video was Roma Part 2 by Grey Guy, an introduction by Thomas Reagan. The first track was licensed under a Creative Commons attribution and or a non-commercial 3.0 license and is hosted at ccmaster.org. The last track was licensed for fair use purposes by Watch It Eye Games. The software I used to create this episode was Audacity by Audacity Team 
and Video Pad Professional by NCH Software. For more information and a review of Unavowed, please check out our website at www.geekingoutabout.com.